Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Maria and today I'm going to do a full face of some products that I've picked up over the last two or three weeks and I'm never really going to get time to do an individual video on them. Some of these products are just new to me and they've been around quite a while. There's a couple of other products that were released I think about two or three months ago. So let's get started. I've already put on my primer and I used the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. This one I find really, really good, especially when I'm going to use a foundation that isn't specifically geared towards oily skin. Those of you that haven't seen any of my videos before, I am 50, well now 52 years old and I have really oily skin. But recently I picked up the La Prairie Skin Caviar Essence in Foundation. This has an SPF of 25 and this is the box that it came in. This is very pricey foundation. I have used it about two or three times and I really like it. The only thing with these cushion foundations, I do wonder how well they will wear in the summer. It's winter here now in New Zealand, so we don't have that humidity. So even though I have oily skin, a lot of foundations that I couldn't normally wear in the summer, I do find I can wear in the autumn and winter. So inside the box, I've already taken it all out, but that's the inside, and it has another layer on top as well. But it does come with a refill. And it also comes with that I just discovered this morning when I had a further dig inside the box here. It also comes with a similar type pouch to Chanel and Dior have. So you can put the caviar foundation inside when you're finished. And this is the pouch that it comes in. And here is the product itself. So I got this in Honey Beige. I wasn't sure which color to get. I saw Liz from Chicago Law Luxury Makeup try this and she had it in Honey Beige. And we've got very similar skin types and the skin coloring as well. And it is a really good match. So the packaging is really, really beautiful. It is very luxe. It feels really weighty in the hand. And inside, it's a generous size mirror, and then you have the cushion foundation in, inside there. It also comes with a sponge type applicator, which I don't use, so I've just put that to one side. And I'm just having a look. Each cushion holds 15 mils or 0.5 fluid ounces of product. And I was just trying to find what the shelf life is on this. It says on the back from date of opening has a shelf life of six months. So this is filled with all the La Prairie Beautiful Skin Care products, which is an added bonus in a foundation, and I really like that. And even though it is an SPF 25, I've done all my skincare before I put on my primer, and the last step in my skincare, and probably one of the most important steps, is my sunscreen. I put on a lot, a quarter of a teaspoon on my face, and another quarter of a teaspoon on my neck and chest. So I certainly wouldn't rely on an SPF that comes in a foundation but it is an added bonus so instead of using the sponge applicator that came with the product I'm going to use a beauty blender sponge and the other day when I tried it I used a foundation brush and it went on lovely then but I thought I would give the beauty blender a go and see what it's like with that I hadn't been using beauty sponges very much but I'd forgotten really how good they are at pressing in product. And also, if you have enlarged pores like I do across here on each cheek, a Beauty Blender is really good for just pressing in that product. And they do tend to give a really beautiful finish. Now this foundation is quite heavily perfumed, so for those of you that don't like fragrance in their makeup, you won't like this. I find the fragrance really, really lovely. It doesn't tend to, well for me, it doesn't tend to hang around too long. So I would say that this foundation gives a 
light to medium finish gearing towards more of a medium finish for me it does cover i have broken capillaries on each side and it does cover that quite well the sunspots that i have it sort of blurred them a little bit so i'll probably add an extra bit of concealer but this foundation really does feel beautiful on the skin it is one that i need to set down as i said i have oily skin not really dry skin but that's fine i will use a setting powder to do that but i really love the finish of this i do think it looks really really beautiful so now i'm going to do under my eyes and i did pick up a new product for that so i picked up the chantecai le camouflage stylo and i got this in shade three i have used this a couple of times and it has skincare benefits in and the type of products that have the skincare benefits in them especially for under the eyes i find really really good for mature skin the products tend to sink into the skin more instead of just sitting on top and then you're less likely to get any creasing so i'm just going to give it its suppressed style and i'm just going to give it a few pumps And I'm just going to press that in using my finger. So it says that the light reflecting pigments are supposed to blur. And also the ingredients in this are supposed to help plump out fine lines. I'm not too sure whether it does that. But it does give a really beautiful coverage. And I find it lasts really well during the day. And doesn't crease or cake up at all so I am really enjoying this product so next I'm just gonna let that sit before I powder it down I'm just going to put on my eye primer and do my eyebrows my eye primer that I use now is the Mac paint pot one and I don't really have a new product to do my eyebrows so I'll do both of those and then I'll be back so I was thinking possibly about putting some concealer over the top in certain places of the foundation but now that it's been sitting down for a few minutes I don't think it really needs it. I think the coverage that I've got is enough and I just think it gives enough coverage and just looks really lovely and natural. I don't want to start adding layers and layers and getting too cakey. So now I'm going to set the foundation down and the concealer down under my eyes and i'm going to use my favorite which is the chanel natural finish loose powder this is the translucent one i'll do under my eyes first i haven't done a video for a while showing how i do that uh, it took me a long time once i hit the age of about 48 to 49 I found that powders tended to crease and didn't look good under my eyes. But I watched a few different videos of people with mature skin and oily skin. And after watching a few of them, I came up with this technique, which works for me. So just because this works for me doesn't mean it will work for you. But if you're having trouble in this area too, this might be a technique that helps the concealer set down and but without things looking too cakey so what i do is i just get the brush and i roll it in the powder and there's always far too much on the brush so then using the lid i tap off all the excess and then i just starting from the inner corner i just gently press that powder in And just to make sure there isn't any excess powder staying there, I then take a really soft brush and just sweep under each eye. And normally I use one of the BK Beauty brushes that I have. It's their powder brush. But I recently picked up some new Chokohudu brushes. And this one is the F01. And this is really beautiful. This is super soft. And this does a great job of just sweeping away any excess powder and also for placing powder on the rest of my face when i first got these brushes they were sort of quite flat and i wasn't too sure about them but once i washed it 
they bloom out quite a bit. So if you're thinking of picking up these brushes, I would recommend giving them a good shampoo first and then, as I said, they really bloom out and they become a lot wider and they put the product on a lot better as well. So using this brush, I'm going to put the same powder on the rest of my face to set the foundation down. And I haven't recently picked up a new bronzer, so the one I'm going to use today is the Dior Forever. It's the natural bronze, and I got this in shade 5. I did a video on this when I picked it up, and I'm going to use the Tom Ford bronzing brush to put that on. I recently picked up another Dior Quint. This one's been around for quite a while, but I'm slowly adding to my collection because I really love the formula of these. And I picked up the Quint in Poncho, and I tried it the other day, and I think this is possibly going to be my favorite Quint. It looks really, really gorgeous. I'm sure most of you have seen what it looks like, but here are the shades and they look really gorgeous on the eyes. I also recently caved in and bought the Natasha Denona the Zendo palette, and I was deciding whether to use that today or this one, but I'm really loving this one, so I thought I would use this one for today's video. So I'm going to go into this shade here first, and this is a Rafa number 15 brush. I'm going to take the Sonia G Worker 3 brush and go into this deepest shade. This is what I often do with eyeshadows. I just find this works for my eye shape and also for mature eyes, putting a darker colour in the outer corner. I don't always do it, especially for if I'm just putting on makeup very, very quickly. But it is a good way of giving that, well, hopefully, that look of the eye being just a little bit lifted. I'm just going to take the Chukahuru Blend Brush. This is super soft, this brush, and it always looks as though I'm pressing really hard, but I'm not, and I just find this really good for just blowing out the colour, so I don't have any hard edges. And then using that same dark colour, I'm going to use the Rafa number 3, and just put some on my lower lash line. And using the Chukahuru F06 brush, I'm going to go into this shade up here to put on the inner corner of my eye and towards the center. And I think these eyeshadows are stunning. There may be some people that think that these colours are boring, but I love this type of colour story, probably because it suits my brown eyes. I'm not sure, but I just love it. I think it is really, really beautiful. So I am going to line my eyes as well, and I'm going to use a Chanel Longwear Eye Pencil. I recently got this one, and it's in the colour Espresso. It is number 20. I've talked about these eyeliners before. That's why I've picked up some more. When you have oily skin and oily lids, it can be really difficult finding an eyeliner pencil that won't transfer and shift throughout the day. Once these are put on, they stay put and they won't smudge or move, especially on the lower lash line, so you don't end up with panda eyes. 
I've gone through so many different eyeliners trying to find the best ones and these are some of the best that I've used. So I'm going to put some on my lower lash line and I'm also going to put some on my upper lash line as well. And I try and get it as close to my lash line as I can. And I know, especially when you have mature eyes, that tight lining underneath gives a really good look as well without being too heavy. And I do that sometimes, but I don't know if it's just me, but I have a huge blink reflex and often I end up stabbing myself in the eye, my eyes water, or I find that some eyeliners can irritate my eyes a bit. I haven't actually tried it with these Chanel ones. I tend to just go as close as I can over the top here. But if you can tight line, I recommend it because it does look really good. It's just that I don't really want to stab myself in the eye today. And that's the eyeliner done. I'm not going to put it on as well, but I did think with these brown colors, the Chanel eyeliner that I've used in another video as well is the Khaki Metal. And I just think that would look stunning with this eyeshadow as well. The green and the brown eyeshadow and this eyeliner has little flecks of gold in it as well so I think it would look really really beautiful so if you have this Chanel eyeliner this is one that you could use with this eyeshadow as well it would look really really stunning and I have picked up a new mascara it's the Shondakai Longest Lash Mascara this has been around for quite a while as well but I hadn't tried a Shondakai mascara I am really liking this. I think this both gives a bit of length and quite a bit of volume. And most importantly, it doesn't transfer during the day. I can have issues with oily lids of it transferring up here and also moving down on my lower lash line as well. And again, giving those panda eyes, but this doesn't do that. It wears really, really well. So now I'm just going to curl my lashes and put that mascara on. Here's just an average size wand, not too large. So I'm least likely to poke myself in the eye with it, which sometimes I do. There's a mascara that I really love, but I have issues with putting it on sometimes because the brush part is so big. I think it's the Bite Beauty. Is it the Upswing Mascara? I think that's the one. It is a beautiful mascara, but the brush on it is just huge. Where is this brush is just far more manageable. And also with this mascara, you can do layers with it as well. I like to layer my mascara two or three times. And next is blush. And I picked up a couple of, they were released a little while ago now, about two or three months ago. And Hermes bought out blushes and some new lipsticks. So I picked up, they're called the Rose Hermes. And I picked up the one Rose Poivre. And it is a beautiful shade. I've used this a few times as well. And these just blend beautifully on the skin. They do have a scent. And the scent is gorgeous. The scent does hang round. So again, if you don't like fragrance in your makeup, you probably won't like these. But I really love this fragrance. But it does tend to linger a bit. And I really like that. But there's some people that, that may put them off. I'm going to use the Chukahudu F03 brush to apply this powder. I've been using this brush as well. I washed it first so it has bloomed out a bit. And this is a beautiful brush for applying powder products. So the blush is fairly subtle but you can layer it up. And I do quite like that. That it can be subtle if you want almost more sort of 
no look with just a hint or flush of color but also if you want a little bit more you can build it up as well so I'll put a tiny bit more on and that blush shade and the formula of the blush is just stunning I'm really glad that I picked that up I did watch quite a lot of reviews on it and I think there were some people who thought maybe the packaging could have been a little bit heavier because Hermes is fairly pricey but the formula inside is really really gorgeous. So now I am going to put on a bit of highlighter. I just recently put up a video of this highlighter and where is it? And it's the new Dior Forever Couture Luminizers and I got two colours Nude Glow and Pink Glow and today to go with this eyeshadow look I'm going to use Nude Glow it's really really beautiful I thought when I first swatched this I talked about this in the video that I put up that it was going to throw far too much gold which I don't really like but it doesn't it's actually very very subtle and in that video I put it on with a Rafa number 16 brush today I'm going to use a fan brush and it's a Rafa one as well it's the Rafa number 20 I'm really impressed with these highlighters they are very flattering on more mature skin they blend in like a dream and they aren't chunky at all they are just really really beautiful and finally i picked up two hermes lipsticks one is the lip balm which is really really subtle i really love it it's probably not going to show very much on the video here so i'm going to put on the other one and this is the limited edition Hermes one and I can see what people mean now when they thought the blushes weren't very weighted because the lipsticks themselves are really weighted very very luxe so I can see why some were a bit disappointed with the blush packaging and the shade I got is the number 17 and it is the Satine Beige et Bleu and this is a really beautiful color it looks quite dark and well the bullet looks quite dark but it actually is quite light once it's put on the lips again this is very heavily fragranced i really love the smell but the formula of these are really really beautiful and they just have the magnetic closure which is really really lovely so that's all the looked finished i quite enjoy doing these videos i pick up a lot of makeup being a beauty youtube channel and i don't always get the time or other new releases come out and it seems a shame not to show you how these products work you might have seen other videos on them but as I said, I've got mature skin, I've got oily skin, and it's always quite interesting to see how the different products perform. Or there may be something like the eyeshadow quint that I tried today. You've been looking at it for a while and unsure whether to pick it up. And maybe seeing a video with it being used might make up your decision one way or the other. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Bye.